Welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. Have you ever wondered how to make a pinwheel block? Matching up the points in a pinwheel can be a little bit challenging at times. So today, I am going to show you a couple of ways that I do it, and then I will tell you which method I prefer for making pinwheels myself. Here are a couple of examples of pinwheels that I have made. This one. I've made smaller ones. That one. And as you can see, some of the points are not lining up. And I attribute that to the method in which some of these are made. So, you want to make sure that when you're making a pinwheel, that you are going to find the method that works best for you. So before we get started, this is the method that I'm gonna show you how to do making this particular pinwheel block. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get your piece of fabric. These are 10 inches, 10 by 10, and I'm also going to be using a pre-cut from a layer cake, which is the white fabric. You can also cut these 10 by 10 if you'd like. And you could cut it to any size that you would like. Uh, some people use charm squares. Um, I used a charm square for this, or charm pack, I'm sorry, and those are five by fives. However you want to do this is, is up to you. But I am going to do it this way because this is going to give me two blocks that are going to finish at eight inches when I, when I square them up. So that's what I want. So what you want is you want your bottom piece to be face up. So you want the print side up. And then your other one, your other piece, if it was a print, you would put it print side down. But because I'm using white, it doesn't matter. I want to make sure that these are lined up pretty well, and you can do that just by tapping with your fingernail just to kind of move the fabric. And that's all that I'm doing here. And then I'm going to flip this over one more time. Okay, I'm going to take a couple of flat pins, and I am going to pin just the two layers together just so that they don't move and I have some really bent pins here. Not good, need some new pins. All right, so next what you wanna do with this is you're going to take a ruler and you are going to go, and my ruler is filthy from all the fuzz, um, but it still works great, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I do need to clean it though. I'm gonna go from one corner to the next corner and I'm using a pencil, just a regular pencil to draw my line. And then I am going to move my mat. Now I'm using a rotating mat. If you don't have one of these, you, it's okay, you don't need one. You just wanna mark an X from corner to corner. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do that again, all right? Then, now that I have my X marked, I'm going to find the center of this because when we go to cut this, we are going to um, we are going to make several cuts. So I want to make sure that I have this pretty even because if we don't, that could be a problem. And that looks right. And all I do is just draw a short line here, just a small line, just so I know where the center mark is. And then I'm going to do the same thing going up and this just gives us a nice point where we know that we need to make our cuts we can line our ruler up on that all right so now I've drawn the lines on here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I am going to sew a quarter of an inch on this side and then I'm also going to sew a quarter of an inch down this side. So 
you'll be left with this middle line and you'll have your two stitching lines right beside it. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other X side. So I'm gonna sew a quarter inch this way and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch this way, just on that line. So what I'll do is I'll line up my foot, my quarter inch foot, and I'll just sew along here. All right, so all I'm doing is lining up my foot right along our penciled line. that part done now I'm going to do the other side and I had to put up a, a poster board to block the Sun because it's extremely bright and you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing here so that was the noise that you were hearing so now we're ready to make our cuts so first I'm going to cut long ways just on that line that we had already drawn in here and you'll see why because this is going to make it much easier then i'm going to line up on our line that's going this way and you want to line up on your mat and make sure that you're not cutting crooked because it will throw it off. I'm gonna have to take these pens out. Take the pens out first. I forgot. Okay. Just gonna line up there and there. Ding. Now we're ready to cut on the diagonal. You want to not move your pieces. Okay. First diagonal cut and then I'm gonna spin my mat. And I'm gonna do the other diagonal cut. And now I have my four pieces, or my eight pieces. Okay, so now this is gonna make one block and this is going to make a block. Okay, so now we're here to press these open and I am going to just go ahead and set my seam, my iron, and then I use my fingers to press this open and then I just press along that seam. And that's what I have. Also want to make sure that you're pressing to the dark side. So you want to press to the darkest side of your fabric. And you want to press these correctly because you don't want to get it all wonky. Otherwise your pinwheel will not sit right. Just gonna press this and try not to iron my finger like I just did. No one. Let me push back a little bit. Okay. All right. So the next thing that I like to do, and I just do it while I'm at the ironing table, is I'm going to cut off these little dog ears because we don't need them. So I'm just gonna trim them. 
and you want to do this before you sew and put these together it helps it to go much easier and faster and it makes lining the seams up a little bit easier too So now I have my stuff, my stack is done. I'm gonna move all this junk. Okay, so now we're ready to put our pinwheel together. So I am just going to play with it until I get the actual pattern here. And you'll need to do the same because it gets crazy. There's that, and then there's that. Okay, so now we have our pinwheel, all right? So now what we need to do is we're going to take our top part and flip it, and I'm gonna sew along this edge. So I want to make sure that my seams are budding up and you can actually lock them together so this seam is going this way and the back seam is going that way so they're in opposite directions which makes it much much easier to do this and to sew and I am also going to I'm just kind of playing with this for a minute um, I'm gonna pop a pin in here so that I know that this is where the direction that I'm going in. Oh boy. Dropping stuff right and left here. So I know now by marking this with a pin that this is the side that I'm going to sew down and I put it right where my seams are matching to hold them together. So now I'm gonna sew this one. This is gonna be the top. And then this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Just going to butt up those seams. And I'm going to sew this one, this direction. And I'm also going to pop in a pin, just so I know. So, and if you get mess, messed up or something and you don't know, you can always open this, you can always open them and make sure that you've got it going correct. So like this one, I didn't have it going correct. Okay, so down this side, I'm gonna reposition this. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna go and sew down this side a quarter of an inch and I'm going to do the same here and then I'm going to attach it but I'm going to show you how we attach this I'm going to sew the top piece first I think I've got enough bottom in here still and I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch down And then I'm going to stop. I'm not going to cut my threads yet. Then I'm going to take the second piece and I'm gonna go ahead and take that pin out because now I can. And I'm going to sew it. Move this over just a tad, okay. All right, now I'm going to take it off the machine and I have this string that is connecting it. So I'm going to finger press to the dark side, which is this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and finger press that to the dark. Okay, and then this one, the bottom piece, I'm also going to finger press to the dark. So as you can see, my seams are going to be going in opposite 
directions, okay? And then I can just butt them up like this. So what you do next is you take it, and since your seams are going opposite directions, they, and they're hooked on here, they're gonna butt up very, very nicely. And so that's what I'm going to do. Just gonna butt up those seams. Lock them in. You can actually lock them. You can feel it when you're doing that. So I gotta finish that down again here. I'll just back stitch right there to hold that in place. Yeah, okay. Now what I do is I take my seam ripper and I'm going to seam rip this center piece here just because there are so many, it's it gets very bulky with um, with pinwheels. And when you go to quilt them, they can be a kind of a nightmare. So all you're going to do is just break that thread that's in there and then in the center where you sewed, where you would just attach, there will be some seams in there. You wanna attach them. Not the ones that you just sewed, but the, the center seam. And you're gonna open it up on the back, on, lay it front down. You're gonna take your finger, you're gonna split that seam open like that. Just like you would if you were gonna open it. And then you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna swirl, and then you're gonna press that center seam flat open. And I'm just finger pressing for right now. So there you go. So you should have a seam that's open. And then you have a perfect pinwheel. All right, so that is the easiest way for me to make a pinwheel. I am going to show you how to square this up. And this too is not very difficult. It's actually pretty easy. So I take my ruler Is underneath the camera. I'm going to take my ruler and I want my block to be eight inches. And I did just press this, by the way. It's just not laying the way I want it to. Okay. Um, so I want this whole block to finish at eight inches. So when I sew it, each block should finish at seven. Cutting purposes, we're going to go with eight. Okay, so you need to do four inches on this side, four inches on this side, four inches on this side, and four inches on this side. And what that does is it makes it so that your triangles will turn out perfect and the same size. You won't have a wonky block going. You can also do this with a square ruler. I prefer to do it with this ruler. It's just easier for me to, to do this. So what I do is I like to line my seam up on a line that I know I can line up and easily see. Then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to count over four inches. One, two, three, four. So this is the line that I need to line up in the center on my block. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to match it up with the lines right here on the center of my block and with my lines on my mat. And I'm gonna cut. And then I'm going to spin this. And if you don't have a, a spinning mat, that's fine. You're gonna, you'll work it the way that it works for you, okay? But again, I'm going to line up and I'm going to cut. So however big you want your block to be, that's how you need you need to do the math to figure out 
how much on one side of the seam you need to cut off and how much you need to cut off on the other side. Okay. And now our block is done. And it's an eight inch block. Perfect eight inch block. And as you can see, my pinwheels, they all look the same size because they are. So that is how you do a pinwheel using that method. All right, the next method that you can do is you can do it the really, really old fashioned way, which I have tried to do. And I'm not going to demonstrate this because yeah, it was a headache. <laughs> um, so you can actually cut your triangles and then sew them together. Okay, and then you would have them and you would place them and you would make your, your pinwheel. I find this method to be very, very difficult, at least for me. So if this method works for you, you would take your two printed sides together and you would sew a quarter of an inch. Then you would press this open, okay? And you would put it together just like you did, like we did with this one. So if you wanted to do it this way, you would just go like this. And then I'm trying to make sure I'm showing you how to do this right. So like this. Now remember, these pieces would be sewn together and you would be butting up the seams exactly the same way. This just doesn't work for me. I have tried and as you can see, I did cut all of this fabric out. So now I'm gonna end up making a scrap quilt or something much different out of this because I could not get this to work for myself. But I wanted to show you that there is this way to do it. And then you have your pinwheel. So, if that is something that works for you and you want to give that a try, then hey, I say go for it. And the next method and the last method that I'm going to show you, because there are several ways that you can make a pinwheel block. Um, but this one, I used a charm pack and I went ahead and this method is really neat. I saw this on the Missouri Star Court Company. Jenny Doan actually did this. Um, I guess somebody from her shop had come in and showed her how to do the, the ugh, do it this way. So all she did was she put two pieces of five inch squares, um, printed sides facing each other, and then she sewed a quarter of an inch all the way around this entire block. Okay, so you would sew it all the way around. And then... What you want to do is you take your ruler and you give it a slice there and then you cut it across this way. Okay. Apparently I missed here. I think I need to change my rotary blade. I probably should, I haven't changed it in a very long time. So again, you're gonna to wanna to press these to the dark side, right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm just finger pressing. You would actually want to press this out with an iron but for time's sake, I'm just gonna do it with my fingers. And then you would have your little dog ears and you're gonna to wanna to trim those. You always wanna trim these little dog ears because they can get in the way when you're trying to match stuff up. So, and then depending on which way you want your design, so I think I'll put the dark down this way I want to make sure I'm doing this right. So, this is directional, so it gets a little bit confusing. 
That's why you want to play with it. You want, you want to make sure. I've got to get this on the square side. That's why, because I'm looking at this all wrong here. There we go. There's my square. There we go. Sorry about that. See, I had to think about it too. Always have to think about this. You want to plan this out because it can get very confusing. There you go. And that's what your pinwheel would look like. And then you would take these two pieces and sew them together. You would take these two pieces and sew them together. And then just like I showed you on the machine, then you're going to take the top and the bottom, line them up, butt them up together with those seams, and sew across. And then you'll have that. And then you'll be able to um, square it up. So this is what I made using this method that I just showed you here with the little charm pack. And it turned out fabulous. Okay, so there's that one. I also made this big one using the same, the same method as we did with this one. And then I showed you how to do it with the different method with this one. I actually prefer this method over all of them. I feel like I have more control over this and how this is going to turn out than I do with this. Um, it's just my personal preference. And I say this time and time again, you have to find out and figure out what works best for you because what works for one person doesn't always work out for another person. And that is the beauty of quilting. So there's a lot of people out there who are the quilting police who are going to try and tell you, oh my gosh, you're doing this all wrong. Unless it's a very specific pattern that you are trying to do, that might be true. Um, but for the most part, like making pinwheels, there's several different ways to make a pinwheel. And you need to find which method works best for you. So what works for me could be different for somebody else. And that doesn't mean that my way is wrong or that your way is wrong. It just means that we do things differently and we visualize things differently and put things together differently. So don't get discouraged. Also when doing pinwheels, it takes a lot of practice to get those seams to line up perfectly. Um, I've been making pinwheels for a really long time and I still sometimes struggle with getting those seams to be perfect in the center because even though you butt them up and you do everything right, sometimes in your sewing or in the universe or whatever, it doesn't want you to do it right, I guess. And that, in when you feel that kind of frustration, you need to get up and walk away and revisit it at some other time. Frustration will make you make a ton of mistakes. Trust me, I know, okay? I get frustrated very easily with things and then I start getting tired or whatever and then all I do is make mistake after mistake after mistake when in fact I should just get up and walk away. So that's my number one tip, walk away when you're frustrated. And um, that is it. I feel like I've rambled a lot. <laughs> What's new, right? I should call myself the rambling crafter. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining me today on The Crafty Author. I had so much fun showing you how to make these pinwheels. And I am actually making a baby blanket with these pinwheels for someone who has hired me to do this at work. So I just wanted to share this with you. And if you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Um, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell. You'll get notified each time that I upload a new video. And if you look down in the little right-hand corner, there's a little, um, a little icon 
that looks like my my branding on here. Um, if you click on that, you can subscribe through that button. And you guys, keep on crafting. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.